Hello, everybody at the Center for AI and Medicine. Um, it's a tremendous pleasure to be here and to speak, be speaking at this launch event. I'm Sarah Teichman. I'm head of cellular genetics at the Wellcome Sanger Institute and a member of the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge. I'm also co-founder and co-lead of the Human Cell Atlas International Consortium. And the Human Cell Atlas is an initiative that aims to create a Google Maps for the human body. And the way we're doing that is to using a combination of single cell genomics technologies and spatial transcriptomics to define the cells in our tissues and get from a coarse grained description of cells and tissues as shown on the Google continents, Google countries view on the left to a detailed Google street maps view of all the cell states and cell types in our body as shown in the street maps view on the right. The Human Cell Atlas Consortium was launched in, in 2016 at a meeting organized by Aviv Rogev, myself and, and colleagues. And it's now a global community that includes over 2000 people around the world. It's a grassroots bottom-up scientist-led project that's open for anybody who wants to join. And um, an example of a human cell atlas project is this recent census of cells um, that, that we published last month in Nature that provides an overview of cardiac cells in six different tissues of the heart. And we use this uh, single cell genomics technologies to get a description of cardiac cells as shown over here on the left-hand side where you can see the major compartments of different cells. So there are structural cells, fibroblasts, vascular cells that make the vessels, and then the cardiomyocytes where we find different populations in the atria as compared to the ventricles of the heart. And what I wanna emphasize here is that the, the uh, artificial intelligence methods were used for the very basic data processing and the very basic integration of all of this genomic data, where each dot that's shown here is actually a 25,000 dimensional uh, data point that, that it gives us the transcriptomic fingerprint of a, a particular cell as measured by single cell genomics. And what you can see on the right-hand side is cells that are sitting within a tissue section um, in, in the heart. And so of course the cells that are shown here as individual dots are present in a three-dimensional arrangement in the tissues and the different tissues of the heart. And to basically bring together the microscopy data and the sit on the right and the single cell genomics data on the left, what we need to do is to, to um, combine these different modalities or these different kinds of ways of measuring and looking at cells using artificial intelligence. And it's only in that way that we'll get a holistic view of cells and tissue phenotypes of the dynamics of cells and of the gene regulatory networks, the relationships between genes in terms of their co-expression and regulatory relationships. And so it's artificial intelligence, machine learning methods that will allow us to integrate all these diverse types of data and to get a, a detailed view of, of relationships between cells in terms of their lineage, their clustering, in other words, the cell states and cell types that we need to know about the regular right networks and where they sit within the tissue in terms of the three-dimensional arrangement of the cells relative to each other to, to, to um, make functional tissues. And the, the uh, motivation behind um, this single cell genomics and spatial work uh, to study human tissues and make a human cell atlas is that it'll eventually give us not only a deeper understanding of our, our tissues in a healthy reference state, but will also allow us to understand what changes in disease, uh, enable drug discovery, an understanding of drug toxicities, drug efficacy and resistance, new biomarkers for, for diagnostics and an understanding of genetic variants and their relationships to drugs. Finally, I also wanna emphasize the utility of a cell atlas for regenerative biology. And it's extremely exciting that we were able to team up with Paolo Bonfanti's group in the Crick Institute last month to publish the first human thymus, the first reconstruction of a human organ in the dish. And it was basically through a comparison of single cell genomics data of this thymus in a dish. The thymus is the organ that makes T cells in our body. And so it's incredibly important in terms of uh, 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 the healthy immune system, which is now obviously very relevant for COVID-19 vaccines and understanding COVID-19 severity, particularly as our thymus involutes with age 
And it's it's by comparing the, the thymus in the dish with the, the um, healthy reference thymus, which is data that we published uh, earlier last year in science, that we are able to understand the, 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 the engineered tissue and, and how similar it is to the healthy reference tissue. And it's these data comparisons using artificial intelligence that will um, give us the power to engineer better uh, tissues for, uh, for uh, biological research and ultimately regenerative medicine. And it's artificial intelligence methods that are at the heart of these data comparisons. And so it's a tremendous pleasure to be part of the Cambridge Center for AI and Medicine. And I, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity and thank you for your attention.